Hello, this is Jolie Forrester from Talking Influence and I'm joined by another Forrester here. We've got Ian Forrester from Whaler. It's great to have you here at the show this year. Thank you again for returning as a headline sponsor. It's really good to see you again this year. So you have just finished your session, which is all about the science of influencer marketing, which is something that we've not had or heard about really at the show or in the industry before. So you published the world's first neuroscience study of influence marketing earlier this year, and that is what you spoke about in your session. So I was just wondering if you could just tell us what you studied and what technology you used. Yeah, so I had a couple of hypotheses around influencer marketing, like what was driving the success of influencer marketing. Essentially, I wanted to understand the emotions of Oat by influencer and whether it was very memorable. Those are my two hypotheses. And if that's what you want to do, then really neuroscience is the best way to measure those things. And of all the neuroscience partners we could have worked with, um, really neuroinsight, in my opinion, are, are the strongest. So that's. Those are the guys we work with. They, they use a steady state topography methodology, which is super technical, but basically what they do is, um, is, is um, they put headsets on people and they measure people's brain waves as they interact with content. So you can start to see um, how people are responding to content emotionally and what they're, they're putting into long-term memory encoding, not by asking them questions, but by measuring their brains as they're looking at content. So, Obviously, it gets there's quite a lot of technical stuff in there, but like that's the top line. Super cool technique. Great. So that sounds super interesting. So after all that, what were the most surprising outcomes for you? Um, so I always thought that influencer was going to be super emotive and super memorable. That's why we did the study. But just how much more emotive and memorable it was versus TV, Facebook, YouTube was massively surprising to me. Also, a really interesting thing to come out of the study is the fact that influencer has a very strong priming effect on the other media. So if someone sees an influencer ad as part of a campaign, prior to the TV ad for the same campaign, they're going to respond much more positively to that TV ad versus whether if they'd just seen the TV ad on its own. So just seeing the TV ad, essentially responses are generally negative. They're like, you're pissing me off, you're interrupting my experience, I don't like this. Um, but having seen the, the influencer ad first, the, their influencer is endorsing that product and that campaign. They then see the TV ad for the same campaign, they're like, actually, I'm gonna give this a chance. It's not like overwhelmingly positive, but they've moved from negative to positive. That was probably the coolest thing to come out for me. That's great. So those results clearly prove that influence marketing does in fact work. So taking all of this into account, because I think people's perceptions have very much been somewhat negative and the press can be very negative and the public who may not, who aren't perhaps as informed as we are, the perceptions are a little different. So how do you think that this information will change those perceptions? Well, I think that what this shows is influencer when done well can have these responses and that's a really important like side note to this study like we're not just taking any influencer content like a selfie taking teenager or a Kim Kardashian post not that those can't work necessarily but we're, we're looking at a specific type of influencer content which is very creative very authentic very values driven and so that's where that's when this stuff has such a strong impact, it's very emotive, very memorable. And so for me, the industry should realize that th this is kind of the way to do influencer marketing. And if you do it in that way, you follow those, those ideas, if it's very creative, very authentic, and it's values driven, then you can have incredibly strong results. So those are the top three things, right? Yeah. Great. So those emotions, I guess, and the memories um, evoked by advertising are often the key drivers of sales. So how can brands really start to maximize the power of influencer marketing if they haven't started doing so already? Well, I would say just include influencer as part of your marketing mix. Like use, um, exactly, it's not to be used in isolation. Yeah. Use influencer to tell the same messages, to get across the same messages as the rest of the content in the campaign, but do so, what this study suggests is ahead of time, so lead with your influencer, reach a bunch of people, prime them, and then they're going to be much more 
much better disposed to the rest of the content, the TV, YouTube and Facebook content after that, after having been reached by their influencers. That would be like that kind of a media flighting type insight, I would say, coming out of this. Great. Great stuff. So the study has significant implications of for how influencer campaigns should be measured. So in your session, you talked about measurement towards the end. Can you just tell us a little bit more about that? Yeah, definitely. So we learn a bunch about why influencer works in the study. So it's all about emotions. It's all about memory. Um, and that's great, but you can't do a neuro study every single campaign because it's quite expensive and you know you need people to come into a central location to wear their headsets and all that kind of stuff so what we're now doing is taking those learnings from the, the high level work and we're implementing them across all our campaigns so we've we're, we're creating our own brand uplift study methodology our own creative report methodology which is taking techniques which are scalable like moving from neuro to facial coding, for example, like free filming people's expressions, which you can do at scale, you can do across all kinds of different territories, like all you need is someone with a webcam to turn the webcam on and you can see their expression. So it's not as cool a metric as, or a read of emotions as, as neuro, yeah. but it's still pretty good and it's scalable. Um, and you can also ask a bunch of questions. Um, but again, doing it at scale, and that's what we're now rolling out across all of our campaigns is, um, Brand up list studies, creative reports, like if you come and do a, a Whaler campaign of a certain size, you'll get these studies as standard. Great. So, so what metrics should brands be focusing on right now? Well, it, it, it's not for me to say what metrics, like depending on the campaign, a brand will have a different metric, right? Like so for a new launch, they'll be looking for awareness, like if they're trying to reposition, it might be a change in perception. You know, um, purchase is likely to be important, but it isn't always, like sometimes it's like a like a social campaign, like it's a brand equity campaign. So the point is we've developed a suite of metrics and a, a, a way to test, which basically tests anything that a brand might care about. And depending on whether the brand wants awareness or an emotional response or purchase or whatever, we can test that. So that's really important. Like we're, we, we can fit our testing methodology to what the brand cares about. Perfect. And how do you hope this will inform brand strategies going forward then? Um, well, ultimately, the more we test and the more we learn, the better we become. So the, you know, we're just learning like what's working yet. So we're learning like this worked, this didn't work, and that then informs our work going forward. So, you know, and this is why it's cool to keep this stuff in house as well, because we're amassing this database of of stuff which worked and didn't work, and and we're in house pulling out the reasons why, which then means we're going to be improving, continu continuously improving going forward. So that's. That's like a really key thing for us, and it's a it's a, a major goal for uh, this method of text, testing. Great, keep learning, can't go wrong, I've, and, and that's it. It's such a fast-paced, fast-evolving industry that I think you just need to keep learning, and everyone can then be better informed and improve the whole space. So, can we expect more of this from Whaler in the future? Totally. Oh, we're just literally starting on this journey, right? Like. This is just the beginning. This is the, the neuro stuff was the first step on this yeah. journey. It is a journey. Like this isn't easy to do. We're not going to do it tomorrow. You know, there's a lot of things that we need to line up to make this happen. Um, but we're totally committed to doing so and ultimately becoming what I would call the house of insight for influencer marketing. That's where we want to be. So, 100% um, you'll see more of this stuff. And hopefully next year we'll come back and we'll be able to tell you all the uh, the new cool stuff that we've learned. Sounds great. Thank you so much for joining me today and enjoy the rest of the show. Thank you.